With the power supply and motherboard of the Apple IIe now fully uh, uh, restored, upgraded and enhanced, it's time to move on and fix the keyboard now. So I have these two keyboards here. Um, this one is the original that was on the Apple II I'm restoring. It has a broken key. It's a little bit bent. Here the PCB is slightly bent, but I don't think it's a problem. The metal plate itself is not. Um, and I have this one here, which is an English uh, keyboard. Um, M, the key M is not working. Shouldn't be anything difficult to repair. My original intent was to put this in, because I changed the character ROM now. Um, so I would put this English keyboard. But I was looking at them, and this one is just a subset of this European uh, keyboard. Even the German Quertz instead of QWERTY, even the Quertz has a Y next to it here, and the Y has a Z next to it. So this is actually a, a, a double keyboard um, with the switch uh, underneath the case. Uh, you can choose for this keyboard to be either this or the actual European keyboard, but uh, the characters are all there. So this is a, this one is the sorry this one is the superset. So instead of replacing it, I think I'll just uh, repair this one here. I have uh, I have a, um, another uh, stem or a plunger as people call it sometimes and a keycap and I can just replace this and hopefully I can get it to work that's what I will try first if, if I don't succeed on this one I don't see any reason why I shouldn't but if I don't succeed with this one then I'll come back to this and repair the uh, M let's get going I think I can remove, instead of pulling everything apart, I think I can disorder only this one and then just pull this one out. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. While the disordering station is warming up, we give it a clean.
still finding some detritus, some some uh, dust balls uh, underneath. I really wish I could remove this plate and give it a good clean, but uh, apparently I can't. Maybe I'll just blow some compressed air by the sides. Seems to have done the trick. Now I want to remove this cable so I can clean and lubricate it. Yeah. This part is complete.
Now, although you uh, here see me putting the motherboard back inside and the power supply back inside after I have reunited uh, the case, both the top part and the bottom part uh, of the case, I've learned from this experience that it's much easier and safer for you to first reinstall the motherboard and the power supply to the bottom plate of the case and only then put the whole case uh, back together. Now to finalize it, I'm blowing off some dust with compressed air and I'm putting back in our little memory expansion card that already was there when I got the computer. Memory expansion is back. And now I have a little surprise. What I have here is a flash memory based hard disk emulator from uh, Reactive Micro. It uses a compact flash card in lieu of, uh, of, uh, of a hard disk. And that's why I wanted to know where slot 7 was, because I want to put it on slot 7 so it boots from this as if it were a disk drive. It is in. Let's close the lid now. Ah, oh, look. <laughs> this looks so nice. <laughs> With my stealth processor there. And a stealth new power supply. This looks the part. But it's not over yet. <laughs> now, le pièce de la résistance. Because this is an enhanced Apple IIe now, I'm going to add the enhanced sticker here on the LED window. That's it. Or is it? <laughs> is it really it? Or is there something more? There actually is one more thing. <laughs> we are not done quite yet. And that is this. This is a little fan to keep the Apple II cool. As you guys probably know, Steve Jobs hated fans because of the noise they made. Um, and on the Apple II, it was not a big problem. Uh, but in the Apple III, uh, that machine absolutely should have had a fan and it didn't have one, so it cooked <laughs> uh, quite often. Um, it was one of Apple's greatest disasters, the Apple III, I think. Um, I don't mind the little background noise of a fan, especially modern fans. They're quite silent, so I'm going to install this. This is also made by the hobbyists at uh, Reactive Micro. They, they are quite clever people. Um, and you can just hang it on the side of the Apple II. Uh, maybe right in the middle here, like this. There we go. And the fan, it will just suck out um, the warm air from the inside. And then you also get this from them. connect the mains connector here on the fan and the fan will pass it on to the rest of the computer and connect the composite video cable and now finally we are done <laughs> now it is for real uh, let me just see how I have to turn I think this I have to turn on fan is on, and then the computer here at the back. There we go! There we go! Starting out on ProDOS from the boot, as I wanted. I think 
we can do a RAM test with this. Yeah, let's do a, a RAM test just to make sure that this computer is working fine. Yeah, the card passed. It's just doing a few more passes. It will keep doing this until you say you're satisfied with it. So memory is working. That's eight column display. It looks horrible because I, I, I it, it's not in the right mode uh, to display that. Now this looks good. It's double res, double high res. That's the mode I optimize it for because of the games. Okay, to play games better, we need of course a joystick for the Apple II. This is a vintage IBM joystick, uh, which can also be used uh, on the Apple IIs. Um, I don't know whether this is working. There is a switch missing here. It looks very beaten up. Uh, we will need an adapter for this joystick port as well, but I have one here also from Reactive Micro. You can connect to this side and the other side uh, fits um, the joystick port or the controller pad uh, port on the Apple II. Um, I think this needs probably repair. It certainly needs some restoration. Um, missing rubber feet. So let's open it up. And here I'll just give you a joystick servicing montage. The little Apple IIe, or not so little Apple IIe, is ready and it's looking the part and it's working smoothly. I'm very happy with it. The joystick's very smooth as, as well. It was not self-centering, now it is. Everything is working fine, so it is time to revisit the myth. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves now 
for the myth, the phenomenon, the game that changed it all as far as martial arts simulation uh, is concerned. An amazing jaw-dropping product of 1984. <laughs> Brace yourselves. So there is a whole background story that's very nice when you're playing for the first time to know what role you're supposed to play, who you're playing against, what you're supposed to achieve. You have to save a princess that is uh, captive in a cliff, in a castle on top of a cliff. Uh, and you have to fight an army of uh, yeah, karate skillful uh, warriors <laughs> that are going to defend the castle. It's, it's not just a game, There's, there is a whole story behind it and scenes. Check, out, check it out. <laughs> I, my, my jaw dropped to the floor when I saw this for the first time as a 9-year-old kid or 10-year-old kid. I don't remember anymore. It was in 84. They simulate even the shadows. For the time, this was amazing. And that's you, or me. <laughs> it's in demonstration mode now, so we just start playing. <laughs> that's the castle you have to invade. The story of this for me, um, I was 9 or 10 years old and I had a biology, biology teacher, Jonas, Jonas was his name, and, uh, and uh, one evening he showed up in my house bringing an Apple II e, um, and this game and he wanted to show it to my father because they were both into, into karate, uh, playing very badly, I have to remember how to play this. Uh, they were both into karate, and he thought my father would find this game amazing. Um, so he brought the, the computer to our living room. It was mostly for my father, but I was there, and, uh, and I watched it, and I was just mesmerized by this game. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you see, there's a whole story. This is etched into my memory, this game. <laughs> and you have to run because uh, the furthest you get, uh, the, the less soldiers you're going to face. But if, if one of them hits you while you are not in a guard position, uh, you die instantly. This, these initial soldiers are pretty bad. You can punch the hell out of them. <laughs> but it gets tougher and tougher. I'm still outside the castle, I didn't get in yet. It's, it's coming. And the punches, the movements, the body position, it is now so accurate. I mean, when you, as a kid, when you train karate, they drill into you what the proper posture is uh, and what the right movements are. So that was pretty fresh in my mind. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this character really knows the business. Oh, that ego comes at you as well. You have to be careful. Ah, too late. Ah, darn ego. Get stuff for now. It doesn't just come at you unguarded.
still have a bit of muscle memory for how to play this. Uh, that door can come down on you and kill you in one go. So you have to... You cannot be deceived by this guy who will try to bring you under that uh, door. You have to defeat him first. Only then can you pass. to have patience. He wants you to go under that thing. Yeah, yeah, not to get killed by that door, you have to walk through it, uh, walk under it in a guard position, not while you're running. That's something I knew as a kid, but unfortunately I forgot, learning the hard way again. Anyway, this brings uh, this episode to an end. I, I hope you've enjoyed it, I definitely did. Uh, I'm very happy with my Apple IIe enhanced, pimped, uh, everything, and I'm going to be playing uh, Karateka for the next weeks, I guess. In the meantime, I am making progress on Beast 81, particularly the VGA circuitry. Beast 81 is my reimagination, redesign of the ZX81, but with VGA circuitry and a bunch of other improvements. Uh, the video circuitry is uh, taking most of my time, but I hope to be able to report on concrete progress in the next month or two. Stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, more uh, uh, pimping is coming in episode 9. I don't know which computer yet. It's a surprise for me and for you. Stay tuned. Take care. <laughs>